Hi, my name is Kylie, and I am here today to show you a little more about BenchView's new application, TestFlow. TestFlow provides a drag-and-drop interface to easily create custom test sequences without any programming. There are also a variety of ways to visualize your test results with graphs or tables, as seen here. The data can also be exported to Excel, which I will go into more detail later. Now let's get started with creating this test sequence using TestFlow with a spectrum analyzer and a signal generator. I will also highlight some of the new features of BenchView 3.5. In this example, we want to get the values of each peak in the frequency domain in order of highest peak to lowest peak and export the data for future use. It is an FM signal with an FM deviation of 10 kHz and a center frequency of 2 GHz. To launch the instruments, simply double-click on the Signal Generator and Spectrum Analyzer in the bottom right corner. If your instruments are not loading or a green check mark does not appear above it, please refer to the Connecting Instruments video for further help. Now you can see all the orange boxes around all the available features that can be used in a sequence in TestFlow. To begin our example, we would like to set the Signal Generator to 2 GHz. So we'll come up to Frequency, click and drag this to our workspace, and click Set. We can then type in 2 and click on this to get gigahertz. Next, we want to set the amplitude to negative 10 decibel milliwatts, so we'll come down to Amplitude and drag this over as well. Click Set, and that has been added to our sequence. Next, we want to turn our FM path on, so we'll click down, click FM path, and drag this over to our sequence, and click set. Next, we want to turn the FM path on, so we will click on and also drag this over. Next, we want to set the FM deviation to 10 kilohertz, which it is already at 10, so we can drag this over to our sequence and click set. Lastly, we want to turn the FM rate to 10 kilohertz as well, so we will click and drag to our sequence. Then we need to turn the RF mode on, which is in this upper right corner. Click and drag. And we also need to set the module to be on. Next, we need to go to the Spectrum Analyzer, so we click on this instrument, and it brings up all the possibilities for this instrument. We now want to auto-tune, so we can click and drag auto-tune and add that to our sequence. Next, we want to set the peak threshold to be negative 70 decibel milliwatts, so we can scroll down until we see peak threshold. Then we can click and drag and add this to our sequence as set negative 70. After this, we want to turn the peak threshold on, which is this little box, and drag that to our sequence as set on. Next, we want to get a screen capture and a trace capture. So we'll go up to screen image, click here, and see get current screen and drag this over to the bottom of our sequence. We'll do this again for trace data for get current trace. Next, we want to go back to instrument settings and get a peak search, which is this button here. This will now search for the peaks and get the highest peak, which is the default setting here. We also have to make sure that marker 1 is set to on, so we'll click normal and drag this over. And we want to put this before our peak search, so we can just simply place it in there and click set. Now after our peak search, we want to get the x and y values here, so we'll click and drag, and this time click get for both x and y. After this, we want to iterate through each peak and collect the next highest peak 
that we can get their x and y values. So we're going to want to go to more blocks, which will give us the option of loops. Here we can click the down arrow, and these are all the available loops that we can use in our sequence. We're going to use a count, so we can click and drag to the bottom of our sequence here. Now click more blocks again to condense that. We're going to repeat this six times, so type six in here, and now we can put what we want to be repeated inside this loop. So we are going to first do a next peak, which will collect the next highest peak in our waveform. We then want to collect the X and Y values. So we'll drag that and click get. This completes our loop and it will loop through six times before ending our sequence. Now that we have our entire sequence set up, we're going to run it. So you click play down here to start the sequence. Now it has collected all the data, and this is our trace data, whereas this is our screen image. If you want to see the results, you click results up in the corner. And here you can see all the marker values that it has collected, as well as the trace capture and the screen capture. If you double click on this image, you will now see the screen capture, which shows our marker one at the highest peak. If you click the trace data, you will also see the trace data image and you can scroll your mouse along it to see all the points that you have collected. If you want to export this data, come down to the bottom right corner and click export. This allows you to export the data into either MATLAB, Excel, Word, or a CSV file. We're going to export to Excel, and this is all the information that it could give you in your Excel file. However, we only want the screen captures and the X and Y, so we are going to unclick everything that we don't want. Now we have all the information we want, so we're going to click OK. And here is our Excel file. It shows instrument information as well as start and stop time. And if you scroll to the right, it gives you the data that you collected, as well as your screen capture and trace capture. If you click on these, it will open to show you the screen capture and you can also look at your trace capture, which gives you all the data points. If we want to look at our trace data again, we can compare the data to show that it is very accurate. If you look at this second peak, negative 23.7, which is the same as this negative 23.7 on our data. So hopefully this video was helpful. We saw how to create a test sequence in TestFlow to collect the data points from each peak in the waveform generated from a signal generator. I hope it helped to show a little better how to create a test flow sequence using loops and the new trace data capture function. Thanks for watching.